Well, 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 it seems the EV disruption is happening much quicker than I thought it would. Wow. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. Great news here. I was wrong yet again. EVs are, you know, they're taking over even quicker than what I predicted, and I thought I was optimistic, but it turns out I wasn't. Hello and welcome to the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. Welcome to all your new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you supporting the channel, watching the videos. We've made more than a thousand videos over the last eight months. And one of my favorite ones that I just did was showing you all about what's going on in China. I'll put a link in the description below to that video about the Chinese auto market. It's my top 10 favorite news articles, well not news articles, but most important issues that happened in China in February. And it's really crazy what's happening. It's happening so, 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 so fast. Same thing is going on in Europe. In Sweden, 52% of all cars sold in February were plug-ins. Of those, 27% were fully electric. And the other were plug-in hybrids. The crazy thing is, February of last year, that number was 6%. We've gone from 6 to 52 Wow, that's just ludicrous. Now, when I say they were just 6%, what I mean is fully electric vehicles were only 6% of the market in February of last year. And as you can see, that's entirely changed this year. I mean, 26% from 6%. What are we going to see next year in Sweden? Now, February's combined result of 52% was a historic number. And I think that suggests that there's a good chance by this time next year, 80% of the market in Sweden will be plug-in electric vehicles. Why? While they're following the example of Norway. In addition to that, manufacturers are ramping up EV production massively. And I think right now, there's just not that many EVs being produced, which, what, which is what makes this number even more remarkable. But by this time next year, I believe at least three times as many EVs will be being produced worldwide, at least based on production numbers and growth expected from the factories that I'm seeing in my spreadsheets. This means that in Sweden, people will have a lot more choice. Currently, you've got to wait a long time to get most EVs that people are buying. But that will change over the next year or two. In addition to that, this doesn't include the sales of many Tesla vehicles. We can expect electric vehicles to absolutely dominate over plug-in hybrids again next month when Tesla's ships come in. Diesel-only vehicles took around 13.5% share of the market in February 2022. That's down from 20% last year. And petrol or gas vehicles took only 24.4%, down from 37% year on year. You can see here, Diesel, gas, petrol vehicles, they are dying a pretty fast death. Sweden's top electric vehicles for the month. Kia Nero, number one. Number two, Tesla Model Y. Number three, Polestar 2. Number four, the Volkswagen ID4. Number five, the Volvo XC40. Next, BMW i3. Skoda Enyaq's up next. Audi Q4 e-tron. Then the Kia EV6, which just won World Car of the Year. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Then we've got the Nissan Leaf. Then the Peugeot 2008, followed by the MG ZS EV. By the way, that's made by a Chinese car company. Hyundai Kona, Opel Mokka, Volkswagen ID3. Surprising that ID3 sales are so low still. Mustang Mach-E is next. About the same, same number of sales as the ID3. Porsche Taycan, Volvo C40, and the Opel Corsa. Now, the Polestar 2 obviously was in third place, which is very impressive for the Swedish car manufacturer. By the way, if you think that, that car is Swedish, then um, you've been conned. And I've seen messages all over comment sections in the last month claiming that Polestar and Volvo are Swedish. Yeah, if you believe that, okay, you haven't been watching this channel for very long. Anyway. That's kind of the point of this channel, to actually educate people on what cars are coming from where, where they're owned by who, and you know, what's really going on. So, let's have a look at France. How did France go in February? Well, in February, over 20% of 
cars in France were plug-ins. The Tesla Model 3 was back on top. France is Europe's second largest auto market, so it's very, very important. And it saw plug-in electric vehicles take 20% market share in February. That's an increase up from 13.2% last year. Diesel volume dropped by 39% year on year to just 20,000 vehicles, taking a near record low of 17%. Overall February auto volumes were 115,000, 384, down 13% year on year, and down by around one third from pre-pandemic volumes. Now, Clean Technica says that February's combined plug-in result of 20% comprised 12% fully electric vehicles and 8% plug-in hybrids. This represents a continuation of the trend we're seeing everywhere worldwide, where electric vehicles are taking over the sales of plug-in hybrids. So people are moving away from buying plug-in hybrids to buying electric vehicles. That's good to see. That's a smart decision. So what were France's favorite electric vehicles in February of 2022? First place by a pretty wide margin was the Tesla Model 3 with 3,717 deliveries. In second place was the Dacia Spring with 1,350 deliveries. Third was the Renault Zoe with 1,088. Next, the Fiat 500e, with 1,030. Next was a Renault Twingo with 970. Then we had the Tesla Model Y with 866, followed by the Peugeot E208 with 783, the Kia e Nero with 402, and the Mini Cooper SC with 370. Now, even though some of you might say, yeah, but you know, that Tesla only won because, um, because their ship must have arrived, and so they won the sales, and you know, so that's the only reason they won. <laughs> a lot of you say that, right? But, but fair's fair. Apparently another ship will come to France from Tesla next month. So we'll see a similar result probably in March as well. So what are the cumulative sales though from January and February? Obviously Tesla had almost no vehicles in France to sell in January. Well, Tesla Model 3 still wins with 6,700 deliveries. Renault Zoe has 5,982. I still can't believe people are buying that thing for what it costs. Very expensive for what you get. Anyway, in third place, we got the Dacia Spring with 5,629. Then you got the Peugeot E208 with 3,564. The Renault Twingo with 3,000. The Fiat 500e with 2,663. And the Mini Cooper SE with 1,643. And you know what I'm seeing here? I'm seeing an interesting trend. Pretty much all of those cars are small hatchbacks. Guess what? China does really well and really cheaply small hatchbacks and by the way you can buy cars in china of probably a similar range similar specification similar size for about half the price if not less so what's going on with the id3 why are volkswagen's id3 sales plummeted well volkswagen having serious supply chain issues with chips and since mid-february they've reduced the array of id3 variants available to just one, the active with a 58 kilowatt hour battery and a 45,000 euro price tag. So it's not cheap. Of course, it's much better value in America, surprisingly. So what this means is that not only have the most affordable ID3 variants, those with the 45 kilowatt hour battery, been removed entirely from sale, along with the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery, which is the one that I would personally want. But the previous 39,000 euro pro entry variant for the mid-sized 58 kilowatt hour battery has also been deleted. And I'm wondering why Volvo, Volkswagen have done this. I kind of think, is it to do with the fact that maybe they don't make a lot of profit on EVs? And if you make a loss on an electric car, you can only handle that for so long. That's possible, considering the amount of time that Herbert Deese, Herbert Deese says it takes them 30 hours to build an electric car. They think it takes Tesla about 10. Obviously, Volkswagen is reported to pay about 30% more for their batteries as well. Maybe their cars, they're making a loss in order to get gain market share, which would make a lot of sense. It's probably a smart move to start with, but you need to start reducing those production costs to continue that kind of gain, to keep doing that. What's the outlook in France? Clean Technica says, 
February saw the same seasonal uptick in plug-in share over the January lull that we saw in 2021. If last year's trend continues to hold this year and Tesla makes a big March push, next month it should see share climb to somewhere around the 24% electric only range. In other words, it looks like one in every four cars sold in France in March will be electric. The plug-in share growth later in the year will depend on how quickly Tesla can get its Berlin factory cranking decent volumes of the Tesla Model Y. The sad fact is that despite the legacy automaker's positive rhetoric around moving to electric, Tesla is still the only automaker pumping out a market disrupting volume of electric vehicles. Clearly, that is the key, isn't it? Being able to produce them, talking about them, making a few here and there, it's growth. But much better than that is producing them en masse. Once both the Model 3 and the Model Y are selling in huge volumes in the large European markets, the other automakers will need to be forced up in their production volumes to compete in the race. They will need to be dragged along, unfortunately, says Clean Technica. Given the demand supply for electric vehicles and France's preference for small and affordable EVs, there's a clear opportunity for the likes of BYD, Aura, MG, maybe even Wuling. I mean, that's possible. They can certainly re-engineer that vehicle pretty easily. It's been done in other countries in Europe. And you got others like Hoson, Anita Auto, WM Motor. There's lots of different automakers in China who could potentially sell similar vehicles in size for much less money in France. From where we stand today, I would expect a monthly plug-in share in the mid-30s by the end of 2022. And personally, this is going to be my prediction for France for the end of 2022. 40% plug-in share. Yep. I know I'm being aggressive and optimistic, but so far, every time I sound like I'm being optimistic, overly optimistic, I turn out to be pessimistic. So who knows? Let's wait and see. I'm excited to know. What do you, what do you think? Have a guess. Let me know in the comment section below and have a great day. Look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Bye-bye.